Hello everyone, Gerard Scarpacey here, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community, back for our second HB Live of the day. It's been an incredible day of education. Super excited about tonight, because we've got our good friend, Jay Mahmood, back. It's been a little while since we've uh, been able to capture the artistry of Jay Mahmood and the education, so we were super excited to have this opportunity to bring him to you. I think he's one of the most elegant hair cutters in the business, and has such a beautiful way with words and explaining himself. He's gonna be doing a beautiful, tailored, graduated shape here with some disconnection on his beautiful model, Angel. Say hi, Angel. Hello. And uh, tell us, so what do you have in store for us tonight? Wow. Well, hello everyone, first of all. Thank you for the introduction. No pressure now, Gerard. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I've, um, uh, we've got beautiful Angel here with us today. We're going to work with something very tailored. Um, her previous haircut is um, quite disconnected, so I'm working with lots of different lengths here. And um, the idea is really just to sort of even out the shape a bit, whilst um, putting a little bit of a, an exciting twist on it at the same time. So I'm starting around the front hairline, just using a graduated cutting line, working back just on the base, just so that we're starting to build a longer, heavier feeling towards the top and having it quite fitted around the edges. Um, if you have a little look at the shape here on the inside, you'll see that through the underneath it is shorter and then we've got some longer length. So the idea is really just to simplify the shape, tie them all together and um, yeah, just hopefully come up with something nice and suitable for her. A lot of our friends are tuning in, Jay. I want to give some shout out to Michaela Olmstead. Hey, Great girl. Here. Uh, Rosa Hawkins says, hi, Jay. Hi, Rosa. How are I'm you? Find a good spot here. Damiana Velo says, bello already. I think that's because of our beautiful model. Yeah. Camille Miller is watching from Long Island. Hey, guys, let us know where you're watching from. We always like to see where in the world people are. We have lots of people today from Scotland. We've had people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like we've got uh, Verligas watching from Greece. We've got somebody else from Scotland. Scotland's very popular. Amazing. Uh, Jay, you're from, uh, from London. I'm from London, yes. And um, we're going to get back into the haircut, but I know you're doing a class here in New York, and you said you're going to be doing lots of education this year in New Correct. York. Tell us about that. Correct. I'm having an amazing time here in New York. It, it actually feels like my second home. And um, I'm here for the next week. It's, um, it's been day one of a three-day course that I'm teaching over here. I'm working with an amazing group of, of hairdressers, independent hairdressers, and we're really working on the strict foundations of cutting hair. And um, if any of my group are watching live, I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of everything that you guys have achieved today. And um, yeah, really, really exciting. Yep, again, people watching from all over, guys, thanks for letting us know. We've got Kevin Cameron in Chicago. We've got Michelle Holman watching from Hermosa Beach. We've got people from all over Dallas, Texas. Uh, let's get back into this great education, Jay. Don't spare us anything. Amazing. Teach us. Fantastic. So I'll just fill you in as to what I'm doing. Um, initially, I started off by allowing the outline to drop away. And um, really what that does is it just gives you this kind of area of softness through here. And now that I've worked to the back of the ear, I'm going to start to refine the shape as I'm going along, making sure I keep that. And the reason for me wanting to keep it is it just gives the haircut a softer kind of feminine feeling. And I think that when we start to work hair short, especially on ladies, we have to kind of be sensitive to suitability as well. Um, so as I said, I'm just going to hold the ear back now, comb the hair straight down and just sort of comb away the hair that I want to keep and start to refine it as I'm going along. So did you leave a little disconnection on the hairline there? I did, yeah. So you, it's Just kind of around. graduated above it and then you left a little disconnection in front of the ear? Exactly. And yeah. that's just to give you something kind of feminine to play with and refine? Exactly. And also, if we look from the front at kind of what it does, it just looks a lot softer, doesn't it? If you tuck the hair back over the ear, it just opens up the face a lot more, which, to be honest, on Angel it would work because she's beautiful. She's got amazing eyes. Um, amazing. I embarrass her all the time. Every time I cut her hair, I say this. But um, she just, you know, she's just so easy to work with. Well, she was saying just earlier that you should have gotten the role of 007. They want oh, yeah? Jay Mahmood to be the new 007. <laughs> what do you guys think? He, let's, let's have a look at Jay, the dapper, dapper hairdresser. So what do we think, everyone at home? The next James Bond, I believe they're yeah. looking for one. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I, you know, having worked with you before, I know uh, previous to hairdresser, you wanted to be an actor. Correct, you yes. remember. I remember everything. Yeah, apparently I was, um, I was too ugly, so I become a hairdresser. What kind of actor? Uh, Action? I just, I Action just movie actor? It. Yeah, now that you say it, that'd be great. That'd be great. 
So again, guys, if you're watching from home, Jay is one of the best teachers that I know. So any questions that you have, please just go ahead and type them in. That's what I'm here for, other than to say complimentary things about Jay. I paid him a lot of money. Yeah, to I'm also things, here to, uh, to share your questions with him. I know the technique you're working on is graduation, right. and I'm sure there's lots of questions about graduation. It's one of the most difficult things to do well. Yeah. Can you recap and explain the whole concept of graduation? When do you use it? What's it for? Absolutely. Any best practices? Yeah. Now, first of all, graduation, I think universally, it kind of has the same sort of definition, doesn't it? in every language that it builds weight. But I was talking to my group earlier on when I was doing a lecture for them and I said that sometimes that definition isn't enough. I remember when I was doing my training and I was told that graduation builds weight, I didn't understand what weight was. So, you know, how could I understand the definition? So I think to simplify and to elaborate further, I would say it's basically when you build length and weight as you work up the head. So you can see on Angel's hair, it's shorter on the outlines and um, we're starting to build length and weight as the head is starting to round off. Um, so I would define that as graduation. It's working from shorter to longer as we work up the head. And you know, what, so you know, from a design standpoint, what are you yeah. hoping to achieve with that by building the weight as it goes up the head? Like, how's it gonna fit into the overall style? I think really, number one, it will give us kind of like a tailored feel. That's the word we've been sort of throwing around a lot with, um, with Angel's hair. But also, it's kind of, if we think about suitability, not only to the head and face shape, um, but also what I want to achieve is, I don't want to flatten the shape too much, I don't want to follow the head shape, because if we look at her face, suitability-wise, kind of, you can see what my hand's doing, we want to start to fill this area here, and that would be really, really flattering for her face shape. So in the simplest terms, it gives a little bit of width at the temple. Absolutely. So in your vision, you were imagining drawing a little bit of width at the temple. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly uh, that. Is graduation something that's suitable for all hair textures? Um, to be honest, I think it's so hard to say, isn't it? I would say that not necessarily, because if, if her hair was really, really thick and heavy, then maybe I would use more of a rounded cutting line to slim it down a bit more. So it just really depends on what you want to achieve. And... In this case, as I said, I want to kind of slim it down. Um, I want, I'm working with quite flat graduation. I want to slim it down, but also maintain width. That, that was a question that came in from Lane Clements, wanting to know if you would yeah. consider this flat graduation, and yeah. maybe you could elaborate on that. I would say so. So if we were going to explain the difference between, or explain what flat graduation is, um, imagine my sections. Now, here's, sections are so important to the way that I'm working. So. If you think I'm working with diagonal sections, and you can see the diagonal sections are quite steep, okay, my sections in this case are guiding my fingers. And what I mean by that is, if you look at the line that joins together in my fingers, you can see it's the same as the section. So, therefore, my, set, my fingers are in quite a flat position. Now, the next step is my scissor to follow that. And you can see directly that's creating a slimmer, flatter shape. And um, like Gerard said in the beginning, actually, keep the questions coming because it's... We want this to be as interactive as possible. We are here for you, and um, please ask as many questions as you'd like. If, if you know, a young hairdresser is out there and trying to get better at graduation, uh, what, what are some of the things you'd recommend for them? Are there any important Absolutely. basic haircuts that they should master to get um, good at graduation? Well, first of all, I mean, graduation is so broad, isn't it? You know, it's, um, it's not a haircut. Let's start by saying that. So, for example, Angel, in this case, has graduation because you can see it's working from shorter into longer as we work up the head. And if we look at my hair, but also it's like a skin fade. This is also graduation because it's working from shorter to longer. So you can see them haircuts are so different um, in, their, in their outcome. So I would say, first of all, the key to beautiful graduation, in my opinion, is fine sections. Because if your sections are really, really fine, you're going to therefore build up weight much more gradually and um, your finished result will look a lot more refined. So, about how thick should the section be when you say fine sections? How, how would people know, you know what, what would work well for it? Okay, to be honest, with regard to the thickness of the section, again, that would differ from person to person based on the texture of hair and also the density of hair, which means the amount of hair somebody has. So if somebody has lots and lots of hair, you're definitely going to have to take finer sections because if your sections are too thick, you won't see your guide, and if you can't see your guide and you're cutting graduation, you're just going to be left with lots of steps and weight lines. 
So in this case, you can see I'm starting to work around the head now. My fingers are starting to follow into the roundness of the head. And this is going to make the shape a lot more tailored. You notice I keep combing the hair down a lot. Okay? Now a lot of people, when they cut hair, sometimes hairdressers in the salon, we do a lot of this, don't we? We kind of fluff the hair up. And um, I would say it's very important, try not to do that and try to comb the hair instead into place. Because by combing it into place, you can start to assess your build-up of weight. And how about tension? How does that come into play here? Yeah, so again, with tension, I think you need to be really careful, especially I'm working around the hairlines at this stage. You don't want to pull the hair too much because the more you kind of force the hair, the more the hair will start to react. You kind of want to use a nice consistent tension, just enough to control the hair, I would say. Again, we've got people watching from all over, which is amazing. We've got some friends from Serbia, Jelena's from Serbia, amazing. Vivian Hello, watching Jane. from White Plains. That's not too far, far away. Yeah. Sandra Galveo wants to say hello, Jay. Hello, Sandra. Thank you for tuning in. Jay, can you, uh, Alana Caruso is wondering if you can show again how you visualize the fullness through the sides with your hands. Absolutely. That so this is a really good trick that I like to kind of, let me break it down for you in the sense of when I'm doing a consultation with someone. Initially, when I approach somebody, I don't think technical initially, I'm thinking just visually. So I'm using the mirror, I'll imagine you guys are the mirror, and I'm looking at kind of the hair texture and analysing it, but also looking at the face and suitability, because when I cut hair, I try to kind of keep suitability on the forefront. So if we're looking at Angel's face here, the idea, by placing my hand against her face, and you can see by doing this, this area... You can see, if I fill that with graduation, that would really work well with her face shape. So just kind of look at the features that you like. She's got beautiful, beautiful contours on her face. If you have a look at this area here, the cheekbone, if I just continue that with my fingers and build outwards, that's going to accentuate her cheekbones. So not only are we slimming the shape down, we're actually building and emphasizing weight here. You mentioned a magical word, uh, suitability. Yes. So how does one begin to learn and understand suitability more. Maybe explain, for maybe for yeah. people who don't use that term, yeah. what, what does that mean to you, suitability? I think suitability to me is appreciating beauty, you know? It's really just learning to create a balance between technique and your visual skills. So there really isn't any right or wrong, man. It's just about having your own visions. Absolutely. And if you can find three, four hundred people that have, uh, like your vision, yeah. you'll probably be a pretty busy hairdresser. Yeah, exactly that. Because really, that's a really interesting point you brought up there, Gerard. You know, isn't, isn't being a successful stylist about essentially making the client happy? I always say that really, if you think about the process of somebody coming in to have their hair cut, it all starts with them one day looking in the mirror and not feeling good about themselves, right? So it's not just a look. I think a haircut is about the way you make somebody feel. Would you guys agree at home? I mean, join in on this, um, on this Absolutely. discussion. In a lot of cases, that can almost be more important yeah. the way you make someone feel 100%. because um, it, you can do great technical haircuts and make someone feel awful and they're never going to come back where you can do haircuts that maybe aren't that great, yeah, exactly. but people can feel wonderful and you can get a lot of love. Exactly. Your, your buddy Ben Coe is giving you a shout out. He says, Jay, my brother and my uh, partner on my very first demo. We love oh, Ben Coe, yeah. such oh, a yes, talented yes, guy. Yes. How are you? Perhaps in, maybe he was in London doing some staff training. I, or remember, something, I, would imagine. I remember, he's a very talented man as well. He cuts hair beautifully. Yeah, he's been doing some bang up work. That's good, man. Great, Keep great up the great work, my man. Enjoy him watching it. Keith Harris, uh, who's a regular viewer, he's asking if you could explain flat graduation in that beautiful way that you explain things, Jack. Absolutely. Well, I'll try my best. Okay, flat graduation is, is basically, first of all, let's define graduation again. Graduation is when you build weight, okay, and it's when you work from shorter to longer as you work up the head. That's how I would explain it. Now, flat graduation is basically building weight, but in a slimmer way. So if you want the outcome to be quite slim, quite fitted, quite tailored, um, I would refer to that as flat graduation. Okay, so really with my sections, guys, I'm curving around the head because I want the shape to have a really nice kind of fluidity to it, something really nice and sort of head-hugging. So you can see my fingers are just following into the nape here. Uh, your buddy Gianmarco Amoroso is watching as well. Hello Gianmarco, how are you? Yeah. 
So again, if, if someone is out there and they wanted to train with you, because I know you have so many people here enjoying this and yeah. so many people that respect your education, you if someone much. wanted to train with you, yeah. what, uh, what would be the best way for them to go about it? Just reach out, to be honest. I mean, uh, I run my own global education company. I literally travel the world on a full-time basis. I'm very, very fortunate. And um, yeah, just reach out either through Instagram or you can shoot me an email on um, info at jmahmood.com and um, yeah, we can, we can talk, we can make something happen. So again guys, if you're just joining us, I'm Gerard Scarpacy, I'm the co-founder of the Hairbrain Community, I'm here with my good buddy Jay Mahmood, he's in New York doing a three-day hands-on class, we've got Kelly O'Connell behind the camera, Hi, everyone. all those great shots for you guys. Uh, if you're enjoying that, let us know. And let us know where you're watching from in the world. And most importantly, if you have any questions. Yeah. We've got a great educator here. Most people consider me a fairly decent educator as well. Oh, so I think He's between amazing. the two of us, we'd be able to give you guys some great answers, some great advice. Anything you want to know, just go ahead and type that in. I'll be sure to share it with Jay. So Jay, this is progressing nicely. Um, one thing that people always wonder about when someone is as precise as you, yeah. working in the salon, how long does it take you to do a haircut? Okay, um, if I did a salon appointment, um, I work at one hour appointments, so my client would be sort of in and out within an hour. Obviously when you're doing it for demonstration purposes, you kind of, you have to explain more, you take your time, you're a lot more thorough in your explanation. Um, but saying that, these HB lives are no more than an hour anyway, so it's going to kind of be done within um, a salon appointment, I guess. Well, I hope anyway. And you know, I think <laughs> sometimes people work very, very quickly and then have to do a lot more refining. Yeah, do, are you a, a believer that if you put time into the basic shape, then you know, as you go on towards the end, you, it takes exactly. less and less time to exactly. get it where you want it? I've been talking to my group, and um, because I travel so much and I teach, you know, hairdressers around the world, one thing I see is a lot of hairdressers. There's a misconception where they think, "Let me rush my shape. Let me get my shape in as quick as possible." Let me blow dry it and that will give me 15 minutes to fix it when it's dry. Why do we need to do that? Yeah, chop no. into it. Exactly. Well. If yeah. we cut it well and then we blow dry it, it should fall into place really well. So I'm going to move Angel around a little bit this way so we can get another perspective. Yeah. Great. Okay guys, so just work in as clean as possible. What's really helping me um, to work clean is keeping the hair wet, okay? Now I remember when I was younger and I was doing my training, I was always told you know, don't make the hair too wet, just keep it damp. Um, I disagree. I think, you know, when you're working with hair, especially on shorter lengths, if you want to keep it clean, you have to keep it wet. Because, you know, the moisture in the hair, um, or the dampness, not only does it kind of make it easier to take sections, but also it weighs down the rest of the hair, and it keeps it out of your way, so your technique is much, much cleaner. All right, we've got a, a great question coming in from Elio Diaz. Yeah. Um, he um, would love to know what your definitions are of line, layer, and graduation, oh, nice. and how you can keep it simple so people don't get confused. You know what, this is, this is amazing because this is the kind of course that I'm teaching at the moment um, for three days here in New York. So first of all, a line. Um, I think now everywhere around the world, people are starting to refer to the technique that was formerly referred to as one length. It's like the line artist line. formerly known as Prince. Exactly. The technique <laughs> formerly known as one line. Exactly, that's exactly yeah. what it is. Um, so really a line is when, when all the hairs come to the same sort of plane or to the same guide and cut with no elevation between sections. Now sometimes people say, you know, a line is created when all the hairs cut to the same plane with no elevation. But I would say with no elevation between sections because technically you can argue if you cut a line in your fingers then you're actually using um, elevation, am I right? Typically, yeah, unless you've got incredibly slender fingers. Yeah, exactly. So guys, I just want to, before I continue with that, I am going to continue. Um, I just want to draw your attention to the way I'm using my comb. It's so, so important. Um, if I'm honest, when I was younger, elevation wasn't a strong point to me. and. Um, I realize through teaching a lot of people can struggle with it. And one thing they struggle with is knowing when to lift and when to sort of pull down and how much elevation you use. So for example, you'll notice as I'm working towards the top, I'm starting to comb from the top, yeah? And when you comb from the top, what that does is it discourages your elevation, meaning you start to build and maintain length and weight. 
And that's very important towards the roundness of the head because I don't want to flatten it down too much. If I use the same um, method as I work into here, into the back, if I'm combing downwards, what's going to happen is not only am I going to use over direction here, I'm actually going to discourage elevation and it's going to get too heavy and bulky. So if you're one of them people where when doing this technique it gets too bulky, I'd say at the top, you um, comb downwards and then look from here, I'm coming through sideways and actually elevating the hair. And you'll notice that's what's flattening it down and stopping me from building too much weight. Okay, let's get another perspective. Let's bring her even around a little bit more this way, Jane. Yeah, absolutely. And let's see you come from that angle. So everyone can see everything from different absolutely. angles, really get the picture here. So you can see now from here, if you look at my cutting line, it's much slimmer and flatter coming into the nape, okay? Your cutting line and your shape is going to follow what your fingers are doing. So if you pay attention to my fingers and my knuckles, they're angled in towards the outline, and therefore my cutting line is going to follow which means my shape is going to follow, okay? So everything is kind of working together. Your sections are guiding your fingers, and your fingers are directly having an effect on your hand. So Jay, you got a lot of love coming in from all over the world. Fantastic. People just give you shout out. Thank and you. Talking everyone. about your great technique and how handsome you are. No way. And now you're lying. <laughs> now you're lying. I, if you are just joining us because the viewership's really going up, um, we're here in New York City, we're with Jay Mahmood, who I think is one of the most talented hair cutters and educators, and just I, the word today that somebody used um, for Jenny Bolding was elegant, um, I think you're a very elegant hair cutter, and I think, you know, for a lot of people, that, that's a great thing to emulate. Um, doing this beautiful head-hugging graduation as model Angel, say hi Angel. Uh, any questions that you have or anything you want to talk about, let us know. It keeps the conversation lively and interesting, and we want to keep engaged with you. Yeah, so I've got some questions for, for the people watching at home. Are you guys ready for some questions from me? <laughs> questions for the audience. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> what do you, how do you guys feel about restyles? This is something I want to touch on because in my experience of teaching, a lot of hairdressers, we can kind of fall into our comfort zone where if somebody comes in for a big change, we kind of hit a wall, don't we? And we don't know what to do and we kind of just talk them into a trim. I don't know, how do you guys feel about restyles? Is there any advice you could give to our fellow hairdressers who may be struggling with restyles? So, you know, I'll say for sure that a lot of that, our good buddy DJ Muldoon says, knowledge destroys fear. Yeah. And I think what happens with a lot of hairdressers, and I'll, I'll answer while we wait for other people to answer, is that they, they haven't learned a lot of different techniques or even the all-encompassing philosophies of hair cutting. Yeah. So they just learned a few haircuts. Yeah, and absolutely. then, you know, they're trying to apply those haircuts. And then if someone comes in and it, what they want is not in that box, it gets you really nervous. Yeah, absolutely. But again, if you're at home watching, you know, Jay's question about kind of changing people's style. Is it something that gets you excited? Does it get you nervous? You know, how many times has someone sat in your chair and said, I was told I could never wear fringe or bangs. Yeah. You know, where anyone can if you train them how to control the growth directions and cut it well. I think you'd look great with a fringe. Oh, yeah, I have one already. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, anyone at home, let us know how's it going for you with those makeovers. Okay guys, so I'm just going to change the way I'm working now, just to make the shape a little bit more interesting, just to play with the weight um, within the haircut. Now, I've worked from one side into the opposite corner of the nape, okay? I started at the front hairline and through um, a lot of patience and clean diagonal sections, I've progressed to here. Now, the idea, the obvious thing would probably be to start from this side and work backwards. But I just want to play with the balance of the shape. If you take a look carefully, you'll notice that the shape is actually offset very slightly because Angel tends to wear her hair over to the left-hand side. So the section is purposely a little bit higher here. And the reason I wanted it flatter here is because when she wears it over, I think it will sit really, really well. Okay? So therefore, I'm going to need some weight on this side to support the weight that we push over onto the left hand side. So um, I want to build something much heavier through here. So we've got a few questions coming in from, uh, a few answers coming in from Jay's question about how people are feeling about makeovers or restyles in the salon. Uh, Julie Welling said she loves change because she gets bored. <clears throat> yeah. um, our team, Gazarian, education never stops. That's the only thing that keeps me moving forward and staying adaptable to all the clients. 
Gino Suoza, who we love, someone who's always tagging Hairbrain and tagging me and all the work that he does and practicing all the classics all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree that when the stylist cannot come up with an answer for a restyle, that is an indication that they need to train. Absolutely. Our buddy Michael Walter Schneider hey. is out there. Oh. Says, great to see all the homies. Classic cats. Michael Walter Schneider, someone who spreads positivity every day. We He's love that. Guy, yeah. Marina Lantos, hey, our, our great friend in New Jersey. Hello, Makeovers Marina. is what makes a client excited and keeps them coming back. Absolutely. Worst thing is when your client gets the same thing over and over again. Yeah, 100%. All right, so let's get into this technique here. You're moving. Are you going to continue to work all the way around the head? Not all the way around. I'm going to work to the back of the ear here. Um, you can see my sections are now starting to <clears throat> kind of radiate more towards horizontal. All right, so to get a better angle on this side, now that you're coming around, we're going to bring you over here. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more, perhaps. Yeah. There we go. How are we doing, Kel? We got a good angle yep. there. Is that good? Yeah. Fantastic. Happy. Money in the bank. Good. Right, guys. So I'm starting to build that weight a little bit more towards horizontal now. So that would be an indication that my shape is starting to be much heavier, okay? And at this stage, also pay attention to the way that I'm feeding the comb into the hair. I'm actually combing from the underneath upwards, which is telling you that I'm starting to encourage elevation at this early stage. If so where the comb come from, comes from will yeah. change the elevation? Absolutely. If at this early stage I'm feeding the comb downwards, I'm gonna to start to build too much length and weight as I'm working up the head, and I don't want that too soon. But as I work towards the crown, I will, um, I will start to do that. Okay, I'm taking my guide constantly from the previously cut side. Can you see that? There's my guide from the previously cut side. And it's very important that we remain fluid and consistent in our technique, and we're not just guessing. So, Jay, what do you have planned for 2019? I know you spent the past few years roaming around the world, <laughs> training hairdressers. Um, you mentioned earlier that you're developing a new curriculum that you're going to be launching. Absolutely. I'm so excited. I'm so glad you asked me that, Gerard. Um, I've been working on a brand new curriculum for my own education brand um, for 2019. It's going to sort of, um, I'm starting to take bookings for 2019. And um, it's, like, it's like a journey. I'd like to start by talking about the, um, the start of that journey. I feel very, very strongly about the foundations of cutting hair. And anybody that knows me knows that I really, really love um, precision cutting and classic hair cutting. And um, one of the problems I see in the industry is that people will go on a classic cutting course, which could be typically between two and three days, let's say. And after them two or three days, they're almost told that, or they almost accept that, wow, well, now I know how to do classics because I've done a classic course. So the next step for me, I'd imagine, is disconnection. But you will never create or you will never achieve mastery by doing a two or three day course. Let me know what you guys are thinking at home as well. Join this discussion. Um, and so what I've designed is like, it's almost like a, a different levels within classics, which I think is really needed because in my opinion, I think that if you're going to really master classics, the key to mastery is repetition and variation. So for example, um, the journey I've designed, it's like a trilogy of precision cutting. Um, they are each three days long, okay? And every time you come back to do this journey, you'll be faced with a different variation, a different starting point, and more importantly, every look you will do um, will be salon-friendly and wearable in the salon. And you know, as you work up towards the third step of the foundations that I've created, it will become a lot more challenging. So um, it kind of eases you into your foundations. And for example, when I look at the way hairdressers cut hair with the greatest respect, a lot of hairdressers, they cut hair, but they don't always fully understand what they're doing. And what I mean by that is they, um, they do things sometimes because it feels right or because somebody has shown them a certain way of doing something and they just carry on doing that without knowing the reasons. So I think really true mastery is, um, is going on a journey and really starting to understand the reasons behind why you do what you do. 
lots of love for your message and Thank lots you. of support preaching to the choir here yeah uh, everyone's saying it takes years to be a master absolutely and again you know a couple of days is about uh inspiration but not yeah, mastery absolutely. so lots of love coming in here thank you very now, much I, your section angles if we can recap for people who are just joining yeah you know you had started on the one side almost parallel to the hairline yeah and as you've moved across to this side you've really changed the angle yeah. let's talk about section angle and, and how that affects the sure. weight build up so for everybody who's kind of joined us let's let's recap i'll work to the camera i'll turn my lady all the way around the beautiful angel everyone angel say hello to everyone okay um so what we've done is we started in the front hairline taking diagonal sections and i'm so glad we've got the air conditioning on in here because the haircuts work from wet to dry so you can see this is going to work for her um, we started in the front hairline taking diagonal sections working a triangular cutting line shorter towards the hairline and we started to refine as we're going along the reason for that is to build some lovely weight towards the top just for suitability purposes whilst sort of tailoring all the outlines. We continue taking diagonal sections, following into the nape area, building length and weight around the crown. And then once I pass the centre, the idea is to again carry on building weight here. But I thought for the sake of variety, just to change the balance a bit, I'd continue from here and start to work upwards so that my sections are going more towards horizontal and it will eventually connect with this length here, building sort of an area of weight behind the ears. And how much longer or heavier will the second side be? Are you going to be overdirecting all Not the way Not dramatically, back, to be honest. It will, visually it will so look So still a lot more to come off on it. Absolutely. So it's just more of a shift or a tilted balance, I it's, think? That's yeah. exactly what it is. And you'll notice that the zone on top is just slightly offset as well. So it will just be a subtle twist in the balance to work with the way she wears her hair. So there's a couple of great words, you know, asymmetric can sometimes be a scary word and sometimes yeah. it's overstating. People think that means like short and long, which it can, yeah. where offset or tilted. Yeah. I mean, it's, sometimes it's more organic and people won't look at it and go, she's got a crazy asymmetric balance, but there's something quirky about it, tilted Absolutely. and offset. So now you'll notice I'm coming from the top. Have you seen this? Like I'm coming from the top, working downwards to start to discourage elevation because my intention is to start to build some length and weight as I'm working towards below the crown. Yeah, so from here, we're coming downwards. So it seems like everything matters for you. Yeah. Every little thing, every little nuance, where you come from, where you exactly. stand, the section angle. I always, I always liken hair cutting and precision cutting to tailoring because just like, just like a, a baseball cap, you know, hair is not like a one size fits all baseball cap, you know, it's, it's like tailoring, isn't it? You know, just the way a designer, I guess, would design a garment based on the wearer. And I think that really haircuts should be a one-off piece. Um, and the same sort of thought process should go into it with regards to suitability. What do you guys think at home? Julie Welling is wondering if um, now, because of the over-direction, mm -hmm. your um, lengths are meeting up with the lengths at the crown? Uh, yes, they are, yeah. exactly. So this length here, through pivoting up here, not pivoting from one point, but gradually pivoting, you can see I'm building um, an equal length in the crown here. Lane Clements has a great term for the tailored haircut. It's the bespoke haircut. I like that. Yeah. I like That's that. like British bespoke tailoring. Yeah, exactly. Like when you get that roll as 007. <laughs> exactly. Again, guys, we're here in New York City. We're here with Jay Mahmood, who is, uh, is a great friend. That's why I like to talk to, uh, to him and say all these things, because I really respect him. Super talented hairdresser, great educator. Really has been spending, you know, most of his adult life traveling the world, teaching hairdressing. Um, and you know we love that at Hairbrained. He's in New York for three days. He's got a group of students. Let's maybe just kind of pan quickly for a second. You can see some of these guys here. And uh, he's going to be coming back more often to, to the States and all over the world to, to do some classes for you. So check him out. Tune in here. If you guys have questions, we really want to hear those. Uh, great questions for a great educator makes it really fun. Thank you. So catch us up. Uh, we're, we're going to pick us up right, right here on the, on the second side. Exactly. So I'm just going to change the way I'm working very slightly. Like I said, um, she wears her hair over to one side. So the side that the weight is going to fall onto I want to build something heavier to support that weight. Okay, so the idea now is to, um, first of all, take a section here in line with the back of the ear. You'll notice that I'm trying to work as clean as I possibly can, and I think that the shorter the hair becomes, the more important um, this becomes working clean. 
And the only way that you can achieve that is by keeping the hair um, wet while you're working. Yelda Nazanin says, tell him not to get too nervous, his father-in-law is watching. Oh yeah? <laughs> Don't worry. Love coming in from our buddy Steve Statland. He says he's yeah. jealous, wishes he was here. Ah, oh, amazing. How are you, Steve? Uh, Gina Monsafi, she's been sharing a lot of love, and she's oh, wondering Gina. if you can talk about um, sectioning on the top, uh, your disconnection there. Absolutely. Um, I know you're going to be getting to it in a few minutes, but everyone can see that section. They're wondering how you chose to section the top off. Now, this is interesting, actually. With the, with the sectioning on top, you're going to see two um, squares, if you like, but really, it's, it's a large rectangle, and the reason I subdivided it is purely down to the amount of hair we have. Maybe I can just lean Angel's head in for a second this yeah. way, and you know, one, can nine, see. One, seven, six, eight, <laughs> zero. We're being invaded by aliens. <laughs> okay, so the idea there, um, and the reason I sort of broke it down there, is just to, um, to deal with the density to keep the hair looking neat because sometimes when the hair, when you have lots and lots of hair and you try to put it into one zone, it, it doesn't sit very well. Right, so now you're working almost completely horizontally, would you Absolutely, say? Absolutely, yes. So, you know, you've kind of gone through the gamut of sections through the bottom here, a real section I angle actually, lessening I here. Yeah. The reason I'm doing that is, as I said, I want to build a little bit more weight on this side um, to support the side parting, if you like, or the way she throws it over to one side. So. Yeah. Being Absolutely. such a technical hair cutter with so much discipline and everything matters, is there ever a time where you just throw that out the window and just kind of cut completely free form? <laughs> do you ever do that? Do you know what? I think I'm too um, obsessive over technique to do that, if I'm honest. As unhealthy as it sounds, mm -hmm. um, I just get such a buzz out of cutting something really clean and making it work. I'm being really honest. and. You know, I guess people would expect me to say, oh yeah, sometimes I like to let loose. No, I like, I love the idea of cutting. Only hair. on the dance floor. Exactly. Because I know you're quite the dancer as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can look through some Facebook videos and you'll see Jay doing the Boogie Wonderland. <laughs> okay, so another couple of sections to go, guys. You'll notice, again, I keep talking about the way I'm elevating here. And you'll notice so far I've been combing from the underneath. So even though I want to build weight, I don't want it to get too long and heavy, okay? Um, so just be really mindful. Now that I'm starting to get towards the top, I'm going to come from um, the top as opposed to from the underneath. So everything matters is the big, uh, the big takeaway here. Yeah, 100%. Now, do you think that, you know, the little things that matter, like so once people get the big idea of sectioning and control, yeah. do, you, do you still think there's room for differences then, you know? 100%. Like does every precision hair cutter have to do things the same way no. or is it just the foundations and then you kind of customize it? Do you know what? It, it'd be boring, isn't it? Like if I'm honest, if everybody cut hair like this, it'd be boring, wouldn't it? I mean, where would we look for inspiration? And I personally think that when you cut hair, it really is about the way that you're feeling. A lot of my work is to do with that. So sometimes I'll come in and, you know, I want to kind of be a little bit more playful with hair. I may decide to play with a lot more disconnection, maybe work that I probably wouldn't normally do in terms of creativity. But you have to evolve, you have to go on a journey in your work. Otherwise, you will get bored. You know, not only will your clients get bored, but you, you won't enjoy it. So you have to switch it up, I think. Hafiz says they're missing you in San Francisco. You should come visit after New York. Amazing. I will do. Again, lots of love coming in. We do have a question from Fran Smith. Um, she's wondering if you spend time in the salon, and if you do, where, where are you working these days? Do you know what? I don't, um, it's funny, I was talking to my group about this only I, For most of my career, um, I've been an educator. I, I joined um, the education team very young in my, in my kind of journey. I'm going to refine the outlines here a little bit more as the shape starts to dry. Um, but I'm just cleaning up as I'm going along. So yeah, um, I don't really work in the salon too much. I've got a few clients who, you know, just through recommendations I've started to take and I've been cutting their hair for years. And I actually enjoy that. Um, but do I have uh, a clientele? No, I don't. no, I don't. I have huge, huge respect for salon stylists. You guys... You guys are the real heroes of the industry. This is really easy to do a nice demonstration and to have an hour. But you guys, the guys who put in a shift behind the chair, day well, to day. Thank you, because I'm one of those guys. <laughs> I still do. I, not as much as I would like, but you I still guys are the real heroes. At least one day a week behind the chair. 
Uh, my clients would kill me if I stopped. If I didn't show up, they'd be, they'd be hunting me down. Yeah. So now I'm just going to join the two zones together. I'm going to come through and just make sure that we've got a connection. It's a very, very subtle shift in weight here in my shape. We're just joining the previously cut shape in behind the ear. Our good buddy Jeremy Hickson says he loves the graduation and he's given us all a shout out. Hey, uh, Jeremy. Uh, Jeanette Knoll says her dream would be to get a fantastic haircut. Well, oh, you can, nice. Uh, Let's do it. Yeah. Get in touch. Let's do it. Uh, Mahara Asan says, wow, it's amazing. Yeah, thank so you. lots of love. That's, it's great to see, you know, hairdressers sharing the love here. Thank you And thank you, much. Jay, for sharing all this incredible education. Thank you for the opportunity. It's always, honestly, can we just take a minute to shout out Hairbrain? You guys, what you do for our industry, the way you bring us all together, I mean, this is an amazing free platform um, for us to share. I mean, you know, you guys are sitting in the comfort of your home or probably driving home or, you know, who was it? Somebody was on a beach before. <laughs> and um, it says a lot about your dedication. But thank you to Hairbrain for giving us this platform to really connect. And I've made so many friends throughout the world when I travel through Hairbrain, and I feel like I know them. And, you know, we've only just met online and we've, we're, we've been friends for years. So thank you to Hairbrain. Yeah, it's, the great it's, work. it's our pleasure. And, you know, again, I have to say it's a little bit of selfishness because I get to hang out every day with all the best hairdressers and learn and, you know, grow my own craft. So Amazing. if you're learning at home, trust me, I'm learning too. Amazing. Very humble words from a master. It's great to see you cut hair, Gerard. Thank you. We were talking about you today in my class, actually. Oh, really? My ears were ringing. <laughs> we were talking about, somebody was saying how they, they've done a razor class with you. And I said that, you know, razor cutting, I've got, I've got a lot of respect for it. Like anything, if it's done well, you know, you have to admire it, even if you can't do it yourself. Actually, more so if you can't do it yourself. And I think that you do it really well, because, because you're very technical as a hair cutter, you put that into a kind of... Um, way of razoring hair with a technical approach, which I, I think is amazing. Well, thank you. And it's, uh, you know, for me, it's just a culmination of, uh, like you said, having a certain approach from my foundation and then wanting to keep expressing it. Um, lots of people are just joining us. We had some questions about cross-checking. Yeah. Is it something that you do? Is it something, yeah. you know, how do you cross-check? If you have so many sections, <laughs> yeah. so many different angles, how, what's the proper way to cross-check this? Yeah, that's really good. So first of all, um, the key to cross-checking is really understanding your shape. I think if you understand it, you'll know where to check. So for example, um, the bits that I kind of jumped around, the areas that I jumped around, they're the areas that I really need to check. So for example, we're joining the back to the front here. So this is an area that we need to check off to make sure that we haven't unintentionally built a corner. Also, we went from here, from flatter, and we started to work up. So I need to make sure through here, through this very area here, that I haven't built um, a bit of weight. So I'm gonna check that off, and I'm also gonna check this off very quickly. And if I'm honest, my sections are so fine. I've been working with such fine sections that, I, and the reason I'm doing that is to actually avoid um, building excess weight, so it should be fine. Any tips on sectioning? I know a lot of people when they try this type of haircutting or they want to be really precise, yeah. they find it challenging to get a good grip on the hair like, like you're getting. Yeah. Any tips that you know someone can strengthen their tension or any best practices there? I'd say first of all, um, keep the hair wet. I keep saying this, if the, if the hair is wet, you'll definitely um, be able to control your sections. And if you control your sections, then it's much easier to actually work on sections individually, if you know what I mean. If you lose control of the hair, it's very frustrating and, and your technique will suffer because your work won't be as clean. Yeah? So you can see I'm being very careful with the way I'm sectioning and cutting. Yeah. Tom Robbins has a question about the amalgamation of pre precision haircutting and barbering. Okay. Uh, what are your feelings about that? I feel very strongly about that, actually. Um, I have a lot of, lot of respect for barbering. There's a lot of amazing barbers in my family, actually. And um, one thing I'm starting to see in barbering is amazing, amazing fades. I mean, it's, it's just incredible what barbers can do. I've got a huge amount of love and respect for them. But I think one thing that I'm starting to sort of see an absence of in barbering is the traditional approach of, you know, scissor over comb. I don't really see scissor over comb anymore, which to me, I think is fundamental if you're a barber. You, with the greatest respect, I promise you, I mean, no disrespect to anybody out there, but if you're a barber or you're an aspiring young barber, you know, don't forget the traditional methods like scissor over comb 
add it to your fading and it will take you to another level. You know, earlier this uh, today we had Jenny Balding do a beautiful haircut and she used some scissor over comb on the undercut. Yeah. And in all honesty, one of the quick questions that always comes up is why not just use a clipper? It's faster. Why not just use a clipper? And sometimes it's not about faster. She explained it beautifully. She said, I love the clipper when I want that kind of clean edge, that manicured um, mechanical edge. And I love the scissor when I want a velvety lived in edge. Right. So it's a different, a different quality. It's absolutely. not about you know always about speed there. Yeah, absolutely. And that being said, she could scissor overcome pretty fast anyway. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and that we were talking about a curriculum before. I've just come up with you know people. I get a lot of love from barbers around the world who say, look, we love the way you cut hair. Um, and one thing that I've seen with barbers is you know as talented and as amazing as they are, when they get to certain lengths. Um, sometimes they can find it challenging, especially with the way that men's hair is going nowadays. Guys are wanting to wear their hair a little bit longer, and for some barbers it's a challenge. So I've actually designed some barbering courses, precision barbering, which is really taking this level of technique and discipline in sections and longer lengths and starting to put it into men's hair. So we're going to revisit sort of corner placement, side parting, scissor over comb, refinement, all these things that I think that young barbers should sort of add to their fade game just to take them to the next level because it's such an exciting time in men's hair. So if there are any sort of young barbers out there who are interested in, in sort of working with longer lengths or even learning the traditional stuff um, like scissor over comb and, you know, tailored shapes... Um, please get in touch. We can put something together for you. It's not well, like I said earlier, you're really preaching to the choir tonight. You've got all your friends and fans watching, and oh, good. everyone's hearing your message in a big way. Big you're love very, to you all. Way. Thank you so much for staying tuned. All right, let's talk about this. Looks like you're moving into the outline, the yep, hairline. Exactly. Now, really break it down for us. The really important thing is to kind of refine as you're going along. You'll notice that I've been cleaning my shape up as I'm going along, and this really just saves you time at the very end. Okay, so. It's just good practice, start to refine your shape as you're going along. I'm going to dust my lady down and I'm going to wrap dry this and start to refine so we can move on to the top. And what I want you to kind of see is that hopefully the refinement on the underneath shouldn't take a huge amount of time. So when you say wrap dry, that means you're going to start to blow dry out. And I might actually have a blow dry or freed up here. Uh, I just realised it might, uh, might be trapped behind the mirror. Maybe while I do this, you can show us what we're going to use brush-wise. Sounds good. That's a good point, actually. It's so important the kind of brush you use to the hair texture. And, um, on Angel's hair, I'm going to use a Denman brush. Um, and um, I'm going to work with a smaller Denman brush because um, Denmans have a lot of tension, which I really love. And because our hair has a bit of movement in it, it will just really help us to control that work. Okay, almost got you ready. I can see here that you're using the new Dyson. That's exciting for us. We've got a, everybody's got a great relationship with Dyson these days. Big shout out to Dyson. Fantastic. Make sure you're all powered up. I guess it's going to turn on this station, I believe. Yeah. All good. So guys, keep the questions coming at home. If there's anything at all you need to ask, if it's not necessarily about this or anything to do with hair cutting or education, please let us know. We've got a lot of experience in this room and... Um, like we said at the start, we want it to be as interactive as possible. Hey, thank you so much. Yeah, try to test Yeah, okay, thank you. So, I'm using a seven row Denman brush. Again, the reason I'm choosing to use a Denman is because of the tension that it has. The reason it has lots of tension, the bristles are quite tough and also they're quite close together, which will give us lots of tension, okay? Literally, just brush the hair around the head repeatedly and this will sort of really slim the shape down and give it a lovely shine and prepare it for checking. So I noticed right away that you removed the nozzle from the dryer. What's your philosophy there? Um, to be honest, the reason I use the nozzle is because if I put a nozzle on which is going to intensify the heat and the hair is this short, um, I think it'll be quite, um, I think it'll get too hot for Angel's hair. So, and also with wrap drying, it kind of by using an open airflow, you cover more surface area. So that's really the main reason. And also, another thing actually, is if the hair is short and you use a nozzle, you'll flatten the hair down too much. So I don't want to flatten the hair too much. And, and is the Dyson a dryer that you're using all the time? Uh, it's, it's recently, it's become one of my favorites. I have to say, it's a really good dryer. 
I also like to use, um, my favourite is probably Parlux. I love Parlux dryers, a real hairdresser's dryer. Um, also, GHD do a fantastic hair dryer. Shout out to GHD and Parlux as well. Great awesome. products. So you have some love, more love coming in from Gino Souza. He's been uh, watching this type of education for 44 years, Amazing. and he's seen the best technicians, and you're definitely one of them. Oh, oh my God. Good oh, company. Sweet. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. So really, really, you need to when you wrap dry. I remember when I was when I was a junior. One of my stylists went to talk to her next client, and she said, "Just take over wrap drying for a second. And she's like, "You know how to wrap dry, right?" I was like, "Yeah, I got it." She come running back within 10 seconds because I was just doing this. Because to me, that's what it looked like. But it's very important that we work methodically, okay? I'm using a lot of control in the way I'm doing it. I'm keeping the airflow down, okay? So we're using a lot of heat. And I'm using tension as well. I'm brushing the hair repeatedly one way and then the other. And really, that's just going to collapse the roof, give us lots of shine and help the hair to sit really, really slim. I mean, but much like your cutting technique, great wrap drying takes patience. Yes, it's not like you can throw all the ingredients in the oven and, you know, it's going to cook in two minutes. It's going to take a little bit of time. Exactly. And um, because the hair is short, you don't want to sort of burn your client. So keep, keep the dryer moving and then come back to an area. You don't need to dry it 100%. Dry this, move over here, then go back to that. Okay, one thing I'd like you to see, and I say this without showing off, but this is a really important um, kind of way that I work. You'll notice I took a lot of time cutting the shape, but one thing I want to draw your attention to is hopefully, hopefully how little refinement we'll have to do, because we spent so much time on the technique that really refinement should only be um, a few minutes. So we've got another great question coming in from Tom Robbins. He's wondering to you, what are the big differences between commercial British hairdressing and American hairdressing? Anything oh, to, to add to that? That's interesting. First of all, shout out to the American, um, American hairdressers. I was talking to my group about this actually, because, because I travel so much, they were asking me what hairdressing is like around the world. And um, I have to say, um, I think the American hairdressers, I'm being completely honest here, they have the best attitude to education. There's no way around the world in any country that invests in themselves so much. Honestly, you guys do so many courses to kind of elevate yourself in what you do. I was, you know, sometimes I heard a lady recently say, oh my God, I haven't taken, I haven't taken many courses this year, I've only done two. And in my mind, I thought, wow. Yeah, some people some haven't people done two in their entire life. Exactly, yeah. so hats off, big love to the American market. Now, what was it about the British hairdressing? I'm British, I'm very proud. I love the hairdressers in Great Britain too. What was the question about British hairdressing? I just, you know, what, what are the differences between commercial, you know, I guess if you're working behind the chair every day, are, are the clients different? Uh, you know, what, what, what are some of your experiences? I think that America is such a huge market, isn't it? And um, it's such a broad spectrum of looks and, and um, client requests. For example, if you go on the West Coast, the hair is very different, as you know, to the East Coast. But I've got my scissors somewhere here. Yeah. Um, so, for example, somewhere like New York, I always feel at home because I feel that the hair, the energy, and everything about New York is more similar to it's that more European in exactly. the climate, yeah. Exactly. But as you get, you know, more south and more west, the warmer climates and more beach kind of aesthetic, a lot of longer hair. Absolutely. Yep. So I'm just going to very quickly refine my shape, okay? Just a bit of scissor over comb. Now, when you're scissor over combing the hair, what you want to do is you want to work in vertical columns, like so, okay? Now, all I'm doing is I'm lifting the hair up and it's almost a form of cross-checking. Okay, my scissor and my comb are working together. A little trick that I like to do is I lock my comb into my finger here and I just move my thumb so they work up together. Yeah, and this works really well for me because my, my comb and scissor are moving completely together. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I feel like your comb is slightly inverted, like the top, Absolutely. the teeth yeah. are a little Facing closer in. than the spine. Can yeah. you explain why? The reason being is because it's, it's encouraging the hair to come out. If you maybe film from the top, um, what you're seeing is you're seeing the expanded shape, and then I'm just sort of um, dusting and refining here to make sure that my horizontal shape is really nice and clean. Okay. 
So really, it's just like making it like she stuck her finger in a socket. And yeah. Because you're, you're not really trying to take this shorter. This I'm is not, more no, of a I'm just, it's just checking. Yeah, really. When the hair's this short, it's a kind of way of checking. Okay, so also I'm going to start to clean up the outlines as I'm going along. Okay. Just another thing, when you're dealing with outlines, if we can get in here, a lot of hairdressers, they do this. They comb the hair forward. They see all of that and they cut that off. That's actually wrong. Don't do that because if you do that, when you comb the hair back down, you're going to have lots of internal lumps and bumps here. So the idea is just comb the hair straight down and then... So find the natural fall and refine exactly, it in the natural exactly. fall. Exactly. And then just sort of um, nibble away at it with the ends of the, uh, with the tips of the blades. Just like that. And then also, this bit's a little bit scary. I'm going to hold the, the blade on the flat here. And just get rid of all these little bits. Uh, a question that I get asked a lot is, can you do this with the clippers? Yes, of course you can. But um, it's a lot more sensitive if you start um, with the scissors. And then just, you know, you can dust off with the, um, with the clippers. So you're kind of undercutting a tiny bit there. Will that help it to lay down a little bit better? Just, um, just kind of refining the hairline. So really. Getting rid of hair random hairs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that should sit nicely. Okay. And then I'm still yet to decide what I'm going to do with the outline. I'll figure that out in a sec, the outline in the back. I'm just going to refine around here, around the face. Okay, getting in really nice and close. Let's turn you around so you can see that. Okay, getting in nice and close around the temple area, as close to the natural perimeter, the natural hairline as possible. And you can see what that does. It just opens up really nicely. Be careful when you're doing this. Obviously, you need a good pair of scissors, but you also need a very steady hand. So, um, so that's a great segue. There's definitely been some questions about scissors or shears, as some people tend to call them. Yeah. What's your preference? What are you working with? What do you look for in the tool? I think with me, I think the way that I work, um, it's, you know, sometimes people work with a really long kind of blade. Um, but in this style of working, you can see that if I worked with a really long blade, it would be very, very difficult to refine around the ears. Um, imagine doing that with a super long blade, I'd probably nick the skin. So with the style of work that I do, you really need um, a shorter blade. So I work with like a, a five or a five and a half is a, a good mm. kind of size blade, I think, for this type of work. Okay, so again here, we're just going to dust. And then we're going to refine the outline. Now with the outline, I want to work with something quite soft. So I'm going to turn the back of the comb, like so. And I'm just going to come in with... So you're able to comb down with a nice tension, separate the hair, exactly. and then by reversing it, you've got tension, and exactly. you feel this will make it softer? Is that because it's stretching it a little bit? Yeah, exactly, and it's just kind of holding, very gently holding the hair into place. I'm coming through at a bit of an angle just to give it a jagged edge, and I want to work kind of closer to the perimeter. I don't want it sort of wispy, but just sort of tailored and refined. So what you're doing there right on the skin, I know is something that, it can be a little scary for some people. Are there any tips when you're moving that super, removing that superfluous hair? Yeah. I'm sure you'll be doing it so, again. Yeah, I'll get move, some of that off you for you. Basically, thank you, Joe. You tilt the head away from you like that, so you stretch the skin. You can put your hand here also, and then just really, really stretch the skin and get the blade in flat on the skin like that. Um, do you know how I practice that? On the back of your hand? No, I actually should. On your face. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Imagine that would take ages. With I'd, those chubby cheeks, come <laughs> on. I'd probably blunt my scissors with the beard. <laughs> okay. You'd have to do it every two hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, guys, so um, <clears throat> just starting to refine the shape. I'm the almost done with the The makes such a difference, you know. Uh, you can just see that little detail. That's not a blunt line. You didn't just oh, come right in. Just gonna... uh, it's a very soft blunt was the line that Jenny was using today that people loved. Oops, it's I'm defined sorry, but thank soft. You. Thank you. Right, so same on this side. I like that actually because I think it will grow out really nicely as well. Her hairline, you can see, is doing something completely different on this side. So the first thing is get rid of the neck hair and then see what you're left with. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Let's calm it down and let's start to go back in like this. Just give it a jagged edge. And I think that that's working really well. Let us know your thoughts at home. Is there anything different that you would do? I promise I won't be offended. Let's just open it up as a discussion. Um, well, you know, I, I think it is a great discussion. In, in the past when I've taught, you know, I've always said there's really 
two or three ways you can think about the hairline. I mean, you can either, on a short haircut like this, you can either taper it in completely, scissor over comb or clip over comb, mm -hmm. and kind of fade it in. Yeah. You can kind of undercut some of that crazy growth direction and leave the hair long enough that it's kind of over it. Yeah. Um, and create some softness or you can do what you're doing here which is just kind of getting rid of the superfluous and then getting a soft edge all the way through there yeah i just think especially with her texture it's the most suitable choice you know her hair wants to move it's got movement to it so kind of allow the hair to move encourage it to move almost give you some shout out your buddy hafiz is saying excellent job my dear uh marina says hey uh, Jay is always amazing. Stephen Statland, our good buddy, says this is making me very happy. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Long time no see. Some excellent tips, says Sean Clark, and there's been nothing but love. Uh, Gino Souza gave another shout out that, you know, uh, this is how he was taught to do hairlines in the 70s. They didn't just come in and use clippers. Yeah. So having that kind of mastery of technique. I think it's quite refreshing from time to time because, you know, when you're a geometric cutter, people expect really solid lines but I think sometimes when people see me pointing into hair and doing softer edges they're actually quite shocked because they wouldn't expect it but why not like I said before your work it'd get very boring if you didn't mix it up from time to time yeah I'm just reading beautifully you can see the texture and the shape and this close-up that Kelly's getting and then that scissor control lots of shout outs for scissor control now oh, for people you. you know and again I think this maybe is one of the biggest challenges that I see with people um, they never took the time or had the training to really understand how to hold the tool yeah. so well. Yeah. And I think that's where your elegance comes from. Can you show some of the important ways that you move the scissor, yeah. the way you hold it, so how example, deep it goes into your hand? Cal, let's get some close-ups First of all, here. if you look at my thumb, um, I'm, not using, I'm, not using my, um, I'm not putting my thumb in too much. I'm just literally using just the edge. And this has given me maximum control because the thumb is such a strong part of your hand. It's such a strong muscle. That if you kind of um, if you put too much thumb in, you're going to have too much. Uh, you're going to be too heavy-handed. So the idea is just use um, just the tiniest bit of thumb, and um, that should make all the difference. It allows you to maneuver the blade in different ways. I'm just going to do one last thing before we go on to the top. Um, I'm going to tilt my lady's head this way. I'm going to come through like this, lift the hair up onto the tight end of the comb, and I'm just really lightly going to point into this. I don't know how clear it is on camera, but there's um, a bit of old colour here. And um, I just want to start to break that up a touch so it doesn't look like, um, like a really solid area of weight. Okay, guys, so um, let me know your thoughts. What are you thinking about the look so far? What should I do with the top? Um, if I'm honest, it's a haircut that's at a transitional stage. I personally think she looks amazing with her hair off her face. So um, I may just layer it and dress it back off her face. Let us know what you're thinking. Again, lots of love coming in for your discipline and the beauty and the seamlessness of your cutting. Uh, this is a great one. Lane Clement says, your discipline is mesmerizing. Oh, thank you, Lane. He's but so sweet. Everyone's definitely excited to see what's going to happen on the top there. Thank if you, If you're just right. joining us, I'll give you a little brief rundown. I'm Gerard Scott Macy, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. We're here on, I think it's 305 or 307, 6. Uh, and that's uh, how many times we've got together with great educators to share education. Um, it's actually more than that because we lost count somewhere, so we're probably more like in 325 territory. You guys can go back and watch those at any time. You go on our Facebook page, either on mobile or on desktop, and you look for the little tab that says video. You click that, you can go back. We've done Jay maybe two, three, maybe four times in the past. You can search through and find all types of great educators. Um, today, Jay's been sharing his beautiful offset graduation through the bottom. Looks like he's just about ready to head up into the top. Yeah. So if you have any questions or anything you want to share with Jay, please give us a shout out. Let us know where you're watching from. We know you guys are all over the world and we love to hear where you're, where you're coming from. So let's get into the top, Mr. Okay, Mamou. Guys, so let's, um, let's go for something really simple, something um, a little bit fun. And um, yeah, like I said, I want to wear her hair off her face. I think she's just really, really pretty. I want her to be able to kind of wear it like this, quite loose, quite undone. And um, she has got a lot of hair. So the idea is, let's take different zones, let's break it up, and um, let's start to get rid of some of this weight in a very technical way. 
Okay, so Sean Clark is watching from Fairbanks, Alaska. I know that there was a bit of a earthquake up there. I hope you guys are all safe and doing well in Alaska. Thinking of you guys. Stay safe. Okay, so um, I've taken a diagonal section here. Okay, now it's very important when you're working like this with no clips that you're keeping the hair as clean as possible. Okay. Why, why is it that you tend to work with no clips? I know you had it clipped up before, yeah. but now you've unclipped it. Why Do you know what? That? I like the challenge, if I'm honest, because it forces you to work cleaner. Um, but also, I think that when the hair is short and if you put too many clips in, it just gets really messy. I just, I'm a bit of a neat freak, or I try to be. I say that without showing off, but I like things to be really neat and tidy. Okay, so I'm going to come through the back here. I'm going to start to um, get rid of some of this length. Um, I could actually take a guide from the crown. Let's do that through there. And I'm going to angle backwards so we just exaggerate this length from the back. So you've kind of taken your first zone diagonally from the crown across towards the back of the ear? Exactly, yeah. And now you're blending through? I'm just working a connection. And um, really, this is just to sort of get rid of some of this bulk. I'm angling out slightly so we're building more length towards the top. And um, I really just want Angel's hair to be warm and quite loose, not into on, on this. I wouldn't want it to look sort of too neat and too flat. So the idea is just to get lots of sort of texture into it. Um, and it's funny, do you remember you were saying before about do I change the way I work from time to time and do I switch it up? I think today I'm going to go for something quite textured on top. Ooh, exciting. So yeah. Okay, so I'm just... Connecting this in loosely to the crown area. Is it starting to disconnect from what's beneath it? It is, yeah. yeah. And um, really just loosely working a connection and then we're going to point that so it's quite broken, almost quite random in areas when she sort of runs her hands through it. And uh, I think because we put so much technique into the underneath of the shape, I think it'll work really well, really well. Great, getting lots of great angles here, trying to capture it all for you guys so you can experience it at home. Let us know if you're seeing everything clearly. We'll try to move around as much as we can so you can see everything in this uh, elegant presentation of cutting. Thank you very much. Uh, Keep the questions coming, guys. Yeah, really, it's so enjoyable well. when, you, when you guys ask lots of questions. Okay, so as soon as I've done this, I'm on my uh, last section now. I'm actually going to start to... Um, point into the hair while it's wet. Now traditionally you see pointing being done on the hair once it's kind of, um, once it's dry. But the reason I'm doing it wet is because when you point into hair wet you actually take more weight out of it because the hair's sort of clumped together a lot more. Um, so I'm just going to come through and really just start to point into it lightly. And this will just sort of break the, um, break the shape up and also when we start to introduce other lengths, they'll just intermix. So with pointing, again, um, some tips here. The angle of the scissor, how to avoid cutting yourself, yeah. how to know how much to do, how much not to do. I think, um, really, I'm using my finger as a guide to how deep I can go. Okay? And um, if you point sort of parallel to the hair strands, what will happen is you'll maintain part of your cutting line. Whereas if you come through a bit more of an angle, your line will be a lot more jagged. So um, just, it just depends on what you want to do. In this case, I want it broken up, but I still want to keep the structure in the shape. So I'm working quite parallel to the hair strands. And now that's getting more and more disconnected due to the over direction. Maybe we can turn it a little bit this way and we can show the, yeah. the effect. Okay, so I'm pointing you know, in areas quite deep just to really lighten up the edges. <clears throat> So that was over-directed back, so when that falls forward, there'll be a little bit exactly. of disconnection. Yeah, so now you can see it's quite random the way this sort of length is introduced. Let's, um, let's continue to sort of split this into zones. So, so when you use that term zone, what, what exactly do you mean? A zone is kind of like an area that um, sort of is broken down into sections. So, for example, this large panel that we have here, we're breaking it down into different what I call zones. So, um, areas that are doing different things, basically. Okay, so we're going to come through this way now. Okay, sorry, Don. And when, when, uh, 
when you say zone, does it have a lot to do with the shape of the head? Is it something that you feel like where it curves and where it's flat? I think that's more to do with the placement of it, really. I mean, um, the shape of the head, for example. So I'm coming through here. We're going to section, leave the fringe area out. And <clears throat> we're going to work something a bit shorter in here because this is where there's lots of hair, okay? So we're going to work a little bit shorter here so we get rid of lots of this way. And we're going to start to build some length that we can fold into. Okay, so again guys, keep the, um, keep the questions coming in from home. Any suggestions, anything you like? Our buddy Anthony Cola is watching. Shout out to Anthony Cola. Oh, yeah. How's it going, I know you guys spent some time working together and you made a big impact on him. Patty Wallace Phillip is watching. Angel says hi, Tony. So again, just continue to... I think it's nice because we're getting rid of some of this old colour, if I'm honest. It's, um, it's a little bit grown now. Also, I'm going to point into it as I'm going along. You know, that'll just break up the solidness of this old colour. So again, a bit of a tilted angle, shorter to longer. Absolutely. Yeah. And having these different kind of directions that'll help to support the hair when you, because I, I know you said you want to dress it up with. Uh, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> if I'm honest, what I'm really into is I love the look of wet look hair. So in terms of the way I dress this, I might just put loads of product in and just leave it quite wet look. I think it'd look really cool. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool. You know, just since you mentioned it, when I first started hairdressing in 1991 at Vidal Sassoon, yeah. there weren't too many great products for that. Yeah. And I worked with some of the very young, well, they weren't that young, I was young, but <laughs> some of the first kind of editorial guys, yeah. and they used KY jelly for that. No way. It worked incredible, wow. especially for photos I'll take and stuff. Your word for it. Yeah, because the hair would stay completely wet, and yeah. they could shape it into these like wet looking pompadours. Okay, so here's a question for the audience at home. What's the weirdest product you do? We know what Gerard's used. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, again, there weren't that many... I'm just waiting for him to put it out of his, out of his bag now. Yeah. There weren't that many specialty products. Like, we didn't have all these conditioning creams and styling creams. You had gel and mousse and hairspray and maybe a blow-dry lotion. So, lots of times we used Nivea okay. as, like, a styling cream. Yeah. Um, and KY Jelly is, like, kind of a wet, wet product. I'm telling you, I saw it selling. We believe you. Yeah. There you go. Fun fact. <laughs> So guys, come on, let us know what, what's the funniest thing you've used. What would you recommend? Like maybe toothpaste. Even toothpaste. No. Julie Welling toothpaste. And I know a lot of the punks used to use shaving cream oh, and man. kind of raw egg to right. make that. Yes. Yeah. Jello, yeah. gelatin. Yeah. Knox gelatin. Beer. Yeah. You could use the alcohol from beer. Yeah. All right, let's get back into the haircut. <laughs> Enough fun there. We're still trying to figure out the best angle. Let's let's see if we can show a few different uh, ways here of how you're cutting this. Okay. So. I'm just coming through in different ways. I'm literally coming to the end now. I'm just going to layer this down and then just get some product in so the hair's quite wet. Okay, so. So in a recap, just so we can make sure everyone's capturing this. Yeah. You started here and you worked short to long. Yeah. And then you cut an angle this way short, short to long. long. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm thinking I want to keep some length this way because this is going to fold over into the shape. So as you're working, it can, when you're working like this, it can get messy when you're working with different zones. So Try to keep it as clean as possible um, and just let the hair sort of fold into itself. All right, so here's some of the products that people have mentioned. Uh, yeah. Julie Welling mentioned toothpaste. Yeah. Uh, Miranda uh, Sweat mentioned cornstarch. Yeah. Um, Jim Coolidge mentioned spit. Wow. I know, well, come on, this you've definitely maybe licked your fingers with some flyaways at some point. <laughs> Baby lotion. Yeah. So lots of good stuff. But you know, now gratefully, we have so many incredible products from so many incredible brands. We've come a long way since, since uh, the 70s, 80s, and even the early 90s. Yeah, so I'll turn my lady this way so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna work short to long outwards now, okay? Um, really, the reason, in case you're wondering at home, what the hell is he doing with all these different lengths and zones? What I want to create is when you start to move the hair around and you run your hands through it, I almost want random bits of length to pop out and also, by working shorter areas, you're actually taking bulk out, but in more of a technical way rather than going through and sort of thinning it out or, um, or using a razor. I'm actually using freehand as I'm going along just to loosen it up. So. We used to call it technical mayhem. Technical mayhem? Yeah. There you go. You know, because you're still technical, but you've 
planned it out by having juxtaposing angles and directions. So I love that. Slightly back. The good old organized chaos. Organized chaos. chaos. There you go. I feel okay, like guys. So <laughs> I'm coming towards the end of my look now. So please, any final questions that you have? Anything that you want to discuss? Anything you want to bring up with the community that's watching at home? It doesn't have to be a question for me. Bring it up. Let's share. Let's get a conversation going. And um, yeah, keep us entertained as we're coming to an end here. Well, you've had so much love and, and so many um, supporters here. Trisha, uh, Dietrich wants to let you know you got the perfect view happening here, Kelly. So thank you for that. Ke yeah, shout Finally. out to Kelly. Everyone. She's working. Kelly's yeah. like the unsung hero here. Oh, no. She's, she's amazing. She's very sung. Yeah. She's a very sung hero. Awesome. Excellente. We've got a few. We've got some French. Uh, Coco de la France. Not sure what that means, but it sounds good. Yeah. I want you to cut my hair, pre please, says I'd Fran Smith. Yeah, leave a message in the comments and I'll reach out to you. I'll cut your hair. Why not? Oh, this is a really interesting question from Sahid. How does it feel to know that Arsenal are going to beat Manchester United on Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not do this. There's an audience. There's a global audience here. Don't do this. Keep it family Yes, exactly. That's, he really hit a nerve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can you block him? Sahid. <laughs> is I it imagine. Shahid from Toronto? Shahid Lalji? <laughs> yes, it is. My brother, how are you, man? Yeah, Shahid is an Arsenal fan. You know these Brits; they take well, their, they take their someone has to. <laughs> they take their football seriously. Okay, so guys, do you know what? I've come to an end. I'm going to clean my lady up. I'm going to recut the whole look for you. Um, I'll tell you how it was cut. I thought you said you're going to recut the whole no, look. No, not for recut. I don't, uh, think we have, I don't think we have battery, do we? <laughs> you got enough power. So I'm going to clean her up. Okay, I really hope you like this. I think that sometimes when people think of a, a geometry, I've ruined the poor girl's makeup. Um, well, she just had her hair colored literally an hour before coming here and they had to rinse it really, really oh quick. So right, let's take this off. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get rid of the gun and then I'll start to explain what we've done. Okay, now a lot of people really, I think, expect when they hear of a geometric hair cutter, they expect really solid outlines, etc, etc, but I, I think I've gone against all of that today, but still in a very technical way, okay? Um, I think it's very true to the way that I work in the sense that it's as technical as possible, okay? It's got a bit of um, softness here in the outline, I just pointed it all out. So let's give you a quick recap, flat graduation through here, fitted into the nape. You can see with the outlines afterwards we came through, really pointed them out. We worked something heavier towards the crown here to build and support the weight. In this side, we came through horizontally, again leaving the outline out, and then we just worked the connection behind the ears. And then on the top, I just split the hair into loads of different zones, working from shorter to longer in completely um, different directions. And you can see what I want from the shape as it starts to dry, is you can see I'm starting to play with the hair a lot. And can you see how, um, where it's been worn onto this side, that extra weight that I built on the left hand side, how it's supporting the shape. Thank you so much for tuning in at home. I'm actually going to photograph and um, post it on my Instagram. So if you guys are on Instagram, it's Jay Mahmood on Instagram. Check it out. Thank hey, you, Jay, Jay, thank you for sharing. Thank, thank you, you all for your love and support. Thank you, Angel, for being so beautiful. We'll see you guys again real soon. We've got two more HB Lives tomorrow coming from the West Coast. So four different HB Lives over two days. We hope you guys enjoy it. You want to get that extra education for the holiday rush. Peace out. We'll see you real soon. Thank you.